Hello, and welcome to Stellar Strategy Gaming. Today we will be going over Druids and Clerics, two of the most complex and yet strongest classes, both ability-wise, roleplay-wise, basically any way you can push it. They're just a strong, but also a little over overly complex class to play. Now, it's very easy to say, oh, a Druid is just a nature cleric. It's just a, a priest who's more into oat bran than communion wafers or whatever <laughs> and you're absolutely right but there's still a little bit more to it than that and one of the things i do like about both of the classes is that because of the variety of divine domains clerics can be very different from each other similarly there is some variety within the druid domains they do have similar spell lists but when you get into the, the meat of their mechanics and, and how each class works, they do diverge in a couple of key ways. The most obvious one is that with some of the druid spells and abilities, they are a little more adapted to frontline fighting than the cleric is. Yes, and I will say that uh, for those of you who are thinking that we just said, oh, well, Clerics and druids can definitely be different and such. We're not saying, oh, you can't play a druid cleric multiclass, for example. In fact, their stats make them incredibly compatible. And on top of that, it really makes a lot of sense, especially given the fact that druids themselves can occasionally have patron gods, though they're not the traditional type of god, uh, where a cleric might worship one of the over gods or one of the higher plane gods, a druid is more likely to draw power from, say, the Feywilds or one of the more neutral planes, so it is important to remember that from a roleplay perspective. Now with clerics, the default is that the cleric is the party's healer. Given the variety of domains, that's not necessarily 100% the case, though as with any other class, I'd say if you have the ability to take the spell Healing Word and you don't, you're really doing your party a huge disservice. It's just such a powerful spell, it can really make the difference in a game. And the party will look to you to be the party's healer. Clerics do have some pretty formidable combat abilities. In particular, if you're going with something like the War Domain Cleric, and also most of the Cleric classes, are able to wear heavy armor. I'm not saying that they would replace a barbarian or a fighter as a frontline character, but as maybe a second line character, so fighters and barbarians and paladins to the front, clerics as sort of the second line, and then wizards and, and maybe warlocks to the very back. They make a lot of sense. And I do really like that about them. I like that there's a little bit of versatility. You can hang out in the back and cast spells at people but if you want to get in there and get a, get a good shot in with your Warhammer or two if you're playing War Domain Cleric or more if you're multi-classed, then, you know, hey, you can totally do that. Yes, and speaking of the subclasses, while I'm not going to list every single one of them because we'd be here for an hour and a half at least, uh, I will say that I do love how they've done these. And... While it's a characteristic of the new of newer books to have more unique subclasses, I'd say even in the original books, uh, for the cleric, there was already quite a bit of diversity happening. A domain of life cleric is very different from a domain of light cleric as far as their abilities goes. And I also really like the both the grave domain cleric and the cleric of the forge. I find that both of those are really engaging and interesting while bringing new mechanics to the class that aren't retreading old material. Material. And yeah, it's just generally a great time. My first character ever was actually a tiefling cleric, and I didn't know what I was doing at all as this character. I picked life domain because I had the awareness that I didn't really know what I was doing, and I wanted to make sure that I was going to play something that would be a value to the party, and the, the healer was the obvious option for that. Life domain is probably the one domain that I don't recommend just because it's, it's a little bit flat in terms of what it can do. But they are a great boon to the party, and it was a fun character to play. So we're going to go ahead and move on to Druids. And as I said before, Druids, early on, they start to gain some abilities that do sort of separate them from clerics. One of my favorite, I would say, underused spells is the spell Shillelay, which allows them to turn a club or a quarterstaff into a magical weapon. It's a cantrip, so they can do it repeatedly, and it's cast as a bonus action, so you could, if you've established that you need magic weapons to fight something, you could turn 
your weapon magical and use it within the same round, which is great. That's a really underrated type of ability. And some people are going to say, oh, that spell's not very good. You can be doing other things. Yeah, I totally get that. There's definitely other powerful things a druid can do, but I love having a good cantrip. Think about the warlock class. Like It's, it's entirely based on one good cantrip because... You know, when you're out of all of your uses of whatever special ability, when you've exhausted your spell slots, which is especially easy to do at low levels, then having that allows you to sort of have a, a, a chance to, to continue to be in the fight. One limitation of Shillelagh is that you have to be touching the weapon while it is, um, while it is enchanted, otherwise it loses the effect. So... In theory, you could probably wild shape yourself into a mouse or something and then have the barbarian pick up the quarterstaff and use it. You know, go crazy. It's a fun game like that. Yes, and I'd say that uh, druids are probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, early spell casters for a great many reasons. I am actually quite a bit of a druid player myself. While I tend towards the charisma-based classes, if the party needs a wisdom-based uh, class or if they need a healer but don't have one, I tend to pick druid. And the reason why is largely due to their wild shape ability, which is just completely broken, might I add, because I think it's at level 2 you get that. And you can wild shape into various creatures, as long as they don't have a swimming or flying speed at low levels, and at higher levels it scales, so your challenge rating of what you can shift into gets higher, and on top of that you gain the ability to swim and eventually to fly. Which just makes them very interesting, and as I've noticed, noted in the past, it allows for the barbarian playstyle, which is also a multi-class druid barbarian, whereby they just have all the hit points. That's basically what that is. Uh, but this also means that they can be a frontline fighter, if you'd like, because they can shapeshift into pretty big things, and they can do a lot of damage before they need to revert to their original form, which still has all their hit points, uh, which is insanely valuable. On top of that, while I'm not necessarily a fan of their subclasses, I'd say that their less original content uh, is still fine because of the fact that their core stats are strong, even though many of the subclasses I feel retread some territory. The fact is, they don't need to be the end-all be-all because of how strong the class innately is. It's not like Sorcerer where you're going to end up having a weak strong core, you're, you're going to have a weak core and then also have a weak subclass on top of that. I have the wild shape table in front of me. At second level you can transform into something max CR one quarter. No flying or swimming speed, for example a wolf. At fourth level you can transform into something max CR one half with no flying speed, so for example a crocodile. And then at eighth level uh, you can transform into something max CR one uh, the example is a giant eagle, so it, you could fly, transform into something with a flying speed. Now, I really love this ability if you're stuck in a party full of murder hobos, because if they get themselves in the situation where the Outreach Mage and the Town Guard are after them, you can just fly away. Also worth noting, one of the uh, circles within the player's handbook is the Circle of the Moon. Uh, when you choose this circle at second level, you gain the ability to use Wild Shape on your turn as a bonus action, rather than as an action. So there again, as with Shillelagh, it's something you can do, you can do it and then have your main action, which in this case would most likely be an attack. Additionally, while you are transformed by Wild Shape, you can use a bonus action to expend one spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level of the spell slot extended. So, yeah. Um, and starting at second level, you can Wild Shape to transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as 1. Ignore the max CR uh, column of the B-shape table. Mara's trying to talk here, but I'm just going to keep right on going because <laughs> I want to emphasize this. At second level, you can transform yourself into something that is meant to take on an entire party of first level fighters, or first level player characters. That's a pretty big deal. That's pretty powerful. And at sixth level, you can transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as your druid level divided by three, rounded down. So that's not quite as thrilling, but that's still 6th level. You can transform into something that's meant to take on an entire level 2 party. You can do this as a bonus action a couple of times between long rests. 
Yeah, and see, the key here is to not use it very often. That way your DM forgets about this. Uh, uses normal challenge rating creatures and then gets really, really mad when you challenge... Uh, shapeshift into like a challenge rating three animal and my last thoughts really on the druid are actually also going to be that they by themselves not only make a strong druid but they also make a great ranger like every other class makes a great ranger better than the ranger given that as we see in tasha's guide which we have mixed feelings about you not only get a free animal companion uh, at the very start of your druid leveling, but on top of that, there's one in there which I really love called Circle of the Flame. Uh, I might make a character and do a video on it later. And they also give you a companion in whatever shape you like as, as long as it's an animal, which means that you can literally just be a better Beastmaster as that animal scales with you. So if you want to make Aragorn, I'd honestly say that you're just better off playing a druid than you are playing a ranger in the current edition. Something I want to point out here, we did dwell a little bit more on the druid than on the cleric, and that might give the impression that we find cleric to be less interesting or less sophisticated. Not at all. Given the range of cleric domains there are, you can have a wide variety of kinds of players, kinds of player characters both mechanically, where in the party this character fits in, and also uh, in terms of role play. A Grave Domain Cleric is going to be a very different person than a War Domain Cleric, and they are multi-classable. Multi, I've mentioned on this channel before, I multi-classed my Way of Shadow Monk into a Trickery Domain Cleric, and the synergies you can pull off with this are just awesome, and you can get additional attacks out of it. And I mean, you can do all kinds of things depending on which, which Cleric Domain you multi-class into. And something is very similar and true with the druid. You've got the ability to summon animals to fight for you. You've got all these wild shape options. And also with some of the, some of the circles are a little bit repetitive, but for example, circle of the land, even within that circle, you've got different spell options to go with what kind of land you choose. And then outside of that, uh, something like a, a spore circle druid, is, you know, it's a totally different direction than you would normally think of a druid being. So, yeah, they're both great and interesting classes. You got a lot of ways you can go with either of them. A lot of flavor, a lot of magic, a lot of smashy smash, if that's what you're into. Just, uh, just really love them both. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for right now. Next up, we're going to be discussing the depths and the heavens which is Azimar and Triton playable races. Please hit destroy, smash, or you know if you want to just like gently click on or touch the like button, that will work as well. Subscribe, and we will look forward to seeing you on the next one.